Good morning, everyone. I'm Rochelle with Reef Ecologic, and today we'll be talking a bit about the Reef Blitz 2022 event we hosted this past June, as well as our other iNatural projects and upcoming events. So I'll be walking you through a bit of a presentation I put together on this, just one moment. Right, so we at Reef Ecologic have in the past year or so taken upon ourselves to promote and be a bit of leaders in iNaturalist, especially in the marine space. So our biggest event to date was Reef Blitz 2022, which we hosted from June 1st to June 8th. We held an informational seminar before we started to help get people used to the tool. And then we went out on various events through these eight days and oftentimes invited other people to come along with us. So in celebration of World Environment Day and World Oceans Day, this event led to us and all the other participants identifying over 400 species of marine wildlife across the Great Barrier Reef. So there were almost 1400 observations in total and of these, 58% were in fish, 9% were in corals, and 6% were of mollusks, with the remainder spread out through other taxa, such as sponges or, or seagrass or seabirds, things like that. The top three most identified species were the spiny chromis, the six bar and the Spanish flag snapper. And if you're following along, um, I'll ask somebody to post the link in chat or I'll do so in a moment and feel free to click through. Uh, the links should post through to the related page on iNaturalist. And some interesting species we did see during reef blitz were the Lord coral. There haven't been too many observations of this on iNaturalist since it started. Uh, as well as creatures like the hawksbill turtle, which is, which is endangered. So this event was great fun, a great initiative to help get people involved. And later on in the presentation, if you're interested in this, I'll also walk through future opportunities of how you can get involved. But in the meantime, I'll pass off to some of my colleagues to talk a bit about various other iNaturalist projects we have in place. And a very good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Adam Smith. I'm the CEO of Reef Ecologic, and I've been a key iNaturalist for just over a year. The project that I'm keen to talk to you today is the one we set up at John Brewer Reef, which is 38 nautical miles offshore from Townsville. It's a beautiful natural reef. And this reef also has the coral greenhouse, which is one of the installations of the Museum of Underwater Art. And it's regularly visited by a number of local scuba divers and snorkelers. So about a year ago, we set up a project for iNaturalists at John Brewer Reef. And the first observation was a quirky little fish that I'd never seen before. And iNaturalist helped identify it as a thread fin. And since then, we've been going out fairly regularly with tourism operators such as Adrenaline and trying to encourage the community to take photos of fish and coral and mollusks and sharks. And I'm pleased to report that to date, there has been 651 observations, which is pretty fantastic, of over 268 species. And around 70 people have been involved as observers and identifiers of those species at John Brewer Reef. Uh, the top three species that have been observed have been the white tip reef shark, the staghorn damsel, and the painted sweet lip. And just as a final wrap up, 
um, myself and another Reef Ecologic team member and my wife, Joe Stacey, were out at John Brewer Reef on Sunday and we were pretty excited to observe the rare and elusive um, potato cod, which you might have heard is often seen up around Lizard Island. So first observation for John Brewer Reef, which just shows the power of citizens to record rare species. Thanks, Rochelle. No worries, Adam, thank you very much. And next we'll pass off to our colleague Al down in Gold Coast and he'll tell you a bit about our project in Orpheus Island. Uh, so hello everyone, I'm, my name is Al and yeah, uh, we, we also have a iNaturalist project up in the Orpheus Island or what we also call Ghoul Body, if I pronounce it right. So Orpheus Island is um, a special place for us because it's this is where um, the, the JC research station is and where we normally hold our um, annual coral reef restoration and leadership training program. So we started a project, an iNaturalist project surrounding the islands where um, to date we've got a total of 826 observations, both for marine and terrestrial species. We've involved um, 222 identifiers and 82 observers in total. So out of the 826 obser observations, it's comprised of 388 species. And the top three most observed species are the giant clams, rain corals, and the six-banded angelfish. Thank you very much, Al. And now we'll move over to our project on the SS Yongala shipwreck. And Adam will tell you a bit about that again. Thank you very much, Rochelle. Um, back to Yongala. So the Yongala is one of the top 10 scuba diving sites in the world. It's quite a challenging scuba dive, generally for advanced divers. It's sited in about 28 meters of water. Um, it's located offshore air, and air is about 100 kilometers by road south of Townsville. It's out in the middle of the Great Barrier Reef Channel or lagoon. Um, it's often fairly rough, the visibility and the currents. So it's a challenging dive. But when you get there, you're overwhelmed with the abundance, diversity, and size of the marine life that makes the Yongala home. So the beauty of iNaturalist is it allows us to capture these species that make the Yongala home, to photograph them, and to compare what's on the Yongala with other sites, such as the Coral Greenhouse, Wonder Reef, and Orpheus Island. Now, to date, there's been around 272 photographs or observations on the Ongala of just under 100 species. Um, and it is quite different. The most commonly photographed species of fish on the Ongala is the humphead Maori wrasse. And often on a dive, you'll see five to 10 of these large green wrasses. Uh, the second most common one is a common coral trout, and they're quite big on the Yongala, big and red and juicy. And then there's also a lot of pelagic species on the Yongala. So we have observed the yellow spotted trevally, as well as sea snakes, turtles, and a range of coral. So I'd encourage you, if you do dive the Yongala, to capture the photos of this amazing megafauna and uh, share it with your community. Thanks, Rochelle. Thank you very much, Adam. And finally, we'll have Georgia, our new intern with Reef Ecologic, tell us a bit about Yunbanan or Magnetic Island. So I'll pass over to Georgia now. Thank you, Rochelle. Um, 
Yes, so Magnetic Island is pretty special in the fact that it is quite close to Townsville and there is quite a lot of tourism and traffic that draws people to Magnetic Island. So setting up a citizen science project there was kind of a no-brainer as well in the fact that it's so diverse and it is a marine and um, national park as well. So a lot of different species and um, observations to be had. Currently, there's about 5,000 or just over 5,000 observations with um, 1,371 species. So it's quite diverse in the fact that it is terrestrial and oceanic as well. Um, the most observed um, currently is the rock wallaby. So it's quite famous for their rock wall wallabies. It's quite accessible as well, which makes sense as to why it would be kind of one of the highest um, observed animals. Uh, but uh, in terms of underwater as well, uh, we have the highest fish observation being the gold stripe uh, butterfly fish and also the coral grouper. So um, those two would be the highest marine species observed at Magnetic Island. Uh, and I think, yeah, it just goes to show that we've been lucky enough to be able to also partner with a few other companies such as Reef Check as well and be able to explain to tourists and other um, other individuals that are visiting the island about iNaturalist and kind of get the word out as well as it is so accessible. So I think it's been a really successful and um, interesting iNaturalist, uh, uh, yeah, observation. Yeah, good question. Thank you, Adam. Um, so some of the most common reefs and I guess some of the most um, diverse reefs would be probably Alma Bay is one of them that a lot of tourism operators go to and also is quite accessible. There are snorkel trails um, also at Jeffrey Bay and at uh, Nelly Bay as well. So along those snorkel trails there are obviously a, a lot of different species that call it home which is why it's so diverse and why it's kind of a trail that is um, advertised for tourists. So those three spots I would say are probably the main ones but there are lots of different reefs and Magnet Magnetic Island itself is quite large and there's a lot more area to, to explore as well. Um, personally, I've been to Jeffrey Bay and Alma Bay snorkeling, and some of the common species I've seen is the butterfly fish as well. I have observed quite a few of those. And last time uh, I was actually lucky enough to, it wasn't alive, it was its shell, but we did see a, a painted uh, crayfish as well. It was its exoskeleton. So that was a pretty interesting and um, cool find to see as well um, off Magnetic Island. So. Thank you, Rochelle, for asking that. Thanks very much, Georgia. And another really cool thing about Magnetic Island is because it's so accessible and popular, it's one of our biggest projects. Just in the past three months, we've had over a thousand new observations added. So if this is getting you excited, feel free to join and add your own. So next we'll pass over to Nathan and he'll be talking about Wonder Reef. I can work the controls here, I will be all good. Great, so I am also one of the marine scientists working with Reef Ecologic and we have been working with the Gold Coast City Council and SeaWorld in doing some coral propagation and monitoring at a new artificial reef installed just off the Gold Coast Seaway in Southport in the Gold Coast. So we set up an iNaturalist project around this artificial reef. The reef itself is a, a series of um, champagne flute shaped seal, steel structures that are tethered to the sea floor. So the depth is 30 metres and the flutes themselves are between 10 and 17 metres. And it was installed predominantly as a dive attraction. So it's a fairly new um, iNaturalist citizen science project. And so far, after just a couple of trips, we've managed to get 37 observations of 24 species um, at that site with 
19 different people contributing to the observations that we've seen. Um, the Gunther's butterfly fish, Ketodon guntheri, has been the most observed species. But one of the most, I guess, interesting and notable observations was on a recent trip down near the base of the structure, we managed to identify a Queensland grouper, the Epinephalus lancelotus, lancelatus, not great with my pronunciations of the Latin names, but uh, the Queensland grouper is a um, endangered species and a protected species in Queensland and really exciting to see that at Wonder Reef. Um, one of those things that as a new artificial reef, I wonder how did it get there? Because it was well over a metre in size, but really exciting and other observations not submitted to our naturalists, but people we've spoken to have also said that they've seen others there as well. So that's a really exciting observation and something that over time we hope will grow and develop with more observations being submitted about Wonder Reef and that will help to tell the story of this new and exciting project that's been implemented by the Gold Coast City Council. Thank you very much, Nathan. So hopefully seeing a bit about our projects have, has helped get everyone excited to contribute. One of the joys of iNaturalist is that it's very accessible and easy for anyone to get involved. You just download the app or go on your computer upload pictures, and that's all you really need to do. Even if you're not confident in your identification skills, everyone in the online community will assist in IDing for you. So we have a few upcoming events that you might be interested to get involved in. First off is the Great Southern BioBlitz. This is a BioBlitz event that encompasses the entire Southern Hemisphere but Reef Ecologic will be managing the Great Barrier Reef region for this event. So that will be taking place from 28th to 31st October. And if you follow our social media or our website uh, closer to the date, we'll likely have some events that you might be able to get involved in. So track, track that. Uh, our next event coming up is the Reef Restoration and Leadership Workshop on Orpheus Island. This is an annual event we run to help train people in leadership skills, sustainability, as well as various citizen science methods. So we'll be covering different coral reef restoration techniques, uh, but there are also chances to learn about other citizen science and staff and as well as participants are often able to use our time out in the water to take some observations for our naturalists. Yeah, and so just to add, Rochelle, we will be out in the water a lot during that workshop observing coral reefs and marine species. We'll have lots of cameras and lots of opportunities to collect observations that we can then submit to our naturalists. So that'll be a great opportunity as well. And there is a link to that event on the presentation so feel free to run through it's also posted on our social media and website and finally next year reef blitz 2023 will be running again from 1st to 8th of june honoring world oceans day and world environment day so again closer to the event uh, follow our page and you'll be able to see what sorts of events we're running and how to, and chances for you to get involved so thanks everyone for listening today. Hopefully you're excited about this tool that helps you take a snapshot of biodiversity and you can see all the various places around the Great Barrier Reef. We've been fortunate enough to do our part to add some observations. So thanks again, and we look forward to seeing you at some of our events or online.